Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to our next uh, lecture or it is just like a MATLAB uh, code session. So here I'll show you the MATLAB code how uh, we have uh, all the, the in the algorithm what I have written on the board in the previous lecture. So I will implement same symbol I have used uh, because I try to make as simple as possible so that uh, you are able to reproduce same result on your computer in your MATLAB code. Therefore, I go slowly so that uh, you will uh, follow the coding as well as uh, so the algorithm. So it should be compatible. Now, as you see, I define my parameter x min is 0, x max is 1. So I give my number of grid 100. So I define like delta x. Then I define my h, which is three point times for delta x. So in the next example, I may show you that how we'll have a different uh, impact of different n. And now this is my h. So I define my alpha. So there on the board, I had defined three. So let me write three here. Then I generate the particle. So i is equal to one to n. So xi is x minimum plus i minus delta x. So this i minus 0, I may not need here. So it is i minus delta x. And now this is a new point where I want to reconstruct. So I want to reconstruct the, the function at new point, which is the mean value of these two grid points. So which is i minus half delta x, which I had uh, written on the board. And now I give my this u of xi is the, the function. I have given the quadratic function. So you can give, you can give any other, other continuous function. It is up to you. And now, so if you can check also just how a function looks like, you can do the plotting. And now, I am looking for the neighbor. So, so I start the interpolation of u of nu at a point i, so x nu of i from the point of, so not x nu from the value of u of xi. So, this u of xi is uh, u of i and u nu of xi is uh, u nu of i. So now let us start with the big loop. So I run from i is equal to 1 to n for the x nu. So this is initialization of my neighbor, number of neighbor for i is equal to for example 1. So I run for all other xi. So I compute my distance or radius. I had given that uh, distance in the code in the, on the board. So I look the difference between my x nu where I want to reconstruct my xi, which is my original grid point. So if absolute value of this distance is less or equal to h, I do the increment of a neighbor. So from nv to nv to 1, then I just make the list, which is the list of nv is equal to j. So that is the, the list of neighbors. So I have to map with the local value to the global one. So now once I have the neighbor list here, and then I will find the nearest value. So I define my r min is large, min is for example, I have nothing. So 
again I run from all neighboring point of this point value uh, the, of the index i. So I look that if this radius is less than r min and radius is positive if it is not lying there. So anyway, at the moment this is not important, we can re remove that. So then I re redefine my r min will be equal to this radius, this is already absolute value here. And my in, uh, mean in will be list of this k. So from this loop, I find my minimum grid from x nu of i. So alpha, so doesn't matter, I have given you a 6, so give it as it is. Now I prepare for the computation of the derivative. So dx of k, w of k, and b1 of k, which I have defined somewhere before that. So it is uh, before that I have defined. It is not uh, visible. So for the first order interpolation with the previous method, what I have that, so I need my, the derivative is s ux divided by s a x x. So this was the formula for the first order derivative. And now I compute two summation. So this I can put it together here. No need to write a double loop so that I can remove. So once I know these two summation, then I can compute my ux. And then from the first uh, method, so our my reconstructed value of u nu of i is u mean in minus x mean in minus x nu of i times ux, which I have given from here. And then, so this also at the moment, so this is the derivative of uh, ux, so is of u, so I don't need that at the moment. Now, so I want to plot the exact solution because we have the analytic function given the x square plus x plus 1. So our u exact will be x nu of x nu square plus x nu plus 1. This is the exact reconstruction. And now we plot our exact value and numerical value here. So computed value is u nu. I have computed here. And u exact is defined. So let us see how the solution, how our reconstructed function, how far is it from the exact solution. So now I'm running the code. So now what I see that, so this, here I have given that if this red, the blue point, blue line is the exact solution, and then this red O are the numerical solution. So we are exactly matching our, our numerical solution to the analytical solution. So if I go to other two, so here also exactly the same, but what I need that I need to compute two by two matrix. So that I have described, so I have not described that, but it is already in the lecture. So then, then I have to solve this two by two system. Then what I get that I get a first order derivative ux, is the first component and second order derivative uxx is the second component. Then my new reconstructed value is u min int minus x min minus x new i times the first order derivative minus half this square, this difference square times second order derivative. And then again, we can plot the exact solution with the numerical solution. So, how it is? It is also the same. So here I'll give you the remark that here I have done very naive way. This may not be the correct way that this ux, the derivative at x nu, may not be correct. And therefore I am having a little bit larger error that can be corrected once I compute the derivative in another way. I will show you. In the, in the next lectures. So now this is the, the first method where we have derived. So this is the MATLAB code for the first method. Now let us go to, to the second one. So moving least square method.
So everything same, nothing changes. So my input are so my uh, the computational domain is zero to one. So x min is zero, x max is one. So I give here number of point, for example, forty. So we can change it later. We can run later. So my delta x is so one by forty here. My h three times uh, delta x three point one times. So alpha is six or six point two five, or we can play with different alpha later. And now I generate my grid point here. So as a regular point. So next I'll show you after that how it is the, with the irregular point. So first we start with the regular point. And now I want to reconstruct the value at some mid value of this uh, grid point. So between two. So my analytical solution. So I want to reconstruct the function u of i, which is a quadratic polynomial. So as I told already, you can give any other function. Now I start the big loop here. So the interpolation. I start uh, so this. So we have to find u nu. So this loop gives you the never list. So this is order of n square. This is not optimal. I have uh, written in the beginning that so you should find the way that uh, because at every point I am looking all points as a neighbor and just cutting up. So this is very expensive if your number of point is very large and then it may not be feasible. So there should be the, there is are many other available neighbor searching algorithm that maybe in future we will explore that how we can do optimal way now we can compute the neighbor in the optimal way now here after finding the neighbor so again the repetition i find the nearest neighbor which is my mean int so here so alpha 1 i don't need to define it is already alpha there so we just uh, I save it here. Now this is for the preparation for the computation. So my SA, SAX, so these are the same definition what we have here. SA, SAX, SAXX, and SU, this is the first order. And uh, SU and SUX is the right hand side vector. So this is the matrix construction. And uh, this is the, the right hand side vector construction. And now I put my A exactly the same as here. So this is my matrix, which I give to the MATLAB. And then since I have my A and so I have given B1, let us write R. So here it is R here. And then so R is equal to the right hand side vector which I have there in the MLS matrix. And now I solve the linear system. So D is the solution is A backslash R. This is the MATLAB uh, command for solving linear system. And now my U nu of I is D1 plus U of mean int. So what I have written on the board, it is exactly the same. So now, so we don't need now at the moment to show that. And now after that, what we have, that this is our exact solution. We want to reconstruct it x nu, so that we can reproduce the exact solution. And now I plot exact solution with the numerical solution. So how it is, let us start. So it is fine, yeah. This is our grid here. Is a regular grid. This is our solution here. So the blue is the exact solution, and the red is the numerical solution. And here, this is the error since we know the exact value. And then we have computed at some point, and we have computed the numerical value. So we can just take the so absolute value between the exact and numerical. So what do we get? The error, maximum error on the boundary here, because of course you can expect that on the left hand side you don't have any point. So you have less number of grid. 
so you have only on the right hand side but if you are in middle so you have enough number of points so it is very fine therefore the error in the middle in the center is something like 5 times 10 to the minus 4 but on the boundary it is little bit larger it is something like 6 times 10 to the power minus 4 here and here also yeah, on the other side is a little bit small because it is not that much um, it does make but anyway our maximum error is 6 times 10 to the power minus 4 now if I do so remember this is first order yeah so here this is the first order formula I have given so I have computed that first order derivative this is the first order so if I use the safe hard interpolation what will happen if I define my d1 is su by sa which is the safe hard formula so here I have already removed here so it is just the average mean how it looks like so Remember, we have our maximum error 10 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 4. So, if I have the order 0, so my interpolation still looks fine. Yeah, the interpolation still looks fine here. But what do we see on the boundary? We have larger error here. So, instead of 6 times 10 to the minus 4, we have 0 0.02. So, that we can reduce if I use. So, of course, this is a zeroth order, we have larger error. First order, we have 6 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, if I increase the number of grid points, what will happen? So, I take 100. So, then we expect that our error will be much smaller. So, let us see. So, these are the grids. So, very fine grid here. So, now with the zeroth order, with the Shepard interpolation, we see that our error is now with 100, maximum error is 8 times 10 to the power minus 3. So this is with the regular point, but I have, our idea is that we don't want to do anything with the regular point, we want with very irregular point because our uh, mesh-free method handles with the irregular point. Now let us make point irregular, how can you make here? So if I generate, instead of generating this regular grid, I generate the function as I told that I write the epsilon times some random number and just give the sign either positive or negative. So from that I can generate the random number. Let us see how it looks. So it is you see so this is a very random grid so this is the blue line is the exact solution and a red line is our numerical solution so our error is with a random number is worse than with a regular value what you see is that it is maximum something like 0 0.02 so this is zeroth order so what will happen when i take my first order approximation yeah the first order approximation so this is safer interpolation let us do with the first order interpolation with the irregular value so let me comment this safer interpolation let us say how it is yeah you see now the zeroth order had given us the oscillation but if you jump to the first order we get very smooth solution even our grids are very very irregular here you see so it's randomly distributed now our error is maximum 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 it is as good as our regular grid so let us see with the same number of point how much it is with the regular grid so if I comment, uh, so, so remember our error is 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 for irregular grid. Of course, if I have my regular grid, I will get 
So here, just let me comment it. And then I will get, of course, much smaller. So this is a regular grid. So my error is 9 times 10 to the power minus 5. This is almost uh, half. Yeah. And now let us do with the less point with the irregular grid. So I take like 40 points. What will happen with the first order? So this is my grid. Yeah, you see, it's very irregular. So this is my original grid. So I wanted to construct my. I wanted to construct in the the in between uh, some anyway somewhere in the mid value of the regular grid. I want to construct the function. And now this is with the first order with this very irregular grid. I got a nice approximation. And if we look the error. So maximum error is 10 to the power minus 3. So you cannot expect much uh, better than that. Now I have derived, so this is the, the first order approximation. And I have shown also with the second order, uh, the, so the zeroth order. And now let us go to the second order approximation. So second order approximation we do is now, so First order, remember the first order approximation with the 40 points. We had 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 3. You remember the maximum error. Now I go to the second order approximation, moving least square order 2. So I take a 4, then I take again now irregular point. Let us start with the irregular point. With the same function, so we hope we should get much better, much smaller error. So it is 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 15. So it is really very, very small. So how do you expect better than that? So this is the the plotting between the exact and numerical solution. Uh, numerical solution it looks always same, but now what we have that. Even with the very irregular grid, if you go to second order, you get very, very small error. So, so let us check if I have my regular grid. So for irregular grid, I get 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 15 as the maximum error. Let us check if I have my, I have the regular grid. So whether with the second order regular irregular makes difference or not. So let us check. I have my regular grid. So remember 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 6 is our maximum error. So it's a regular grid. So it is 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 16. So it is not it is a little bit better, but you are up to order of minus 15, minus 16, so it is fine. So we cannot do, so if, let us start with the, play with the irregular grid with more points. So play with the irregular grid here. So this is with the 40 points, again. Yeah, here what you see now, remember that you get different uh, solution, yeah? So why you are, you may be wondering, because I have taken, this is due to the random number, yeah? So here I have initialized, so I have taken the initial grid depending upon the random number. So you remember that the random number generation, it takes this different seed. So at every time the computer takes different seeds, then 
every few seconds or every next time when you generate, you may not get exactly the same grid point. Therefore, let us see, you just, just remember this picture. And now I run it the next, you may not get exactly, but the error is almost like the same, 10 to the power minus 15, minus 16. So let us run again. So you see, you have different pictures. So this is due to the fact that the computer generates the ran seed, gives the different seed. So in order see, to see the always the same, same plot, so you have to fix the seed. So you have to initialize the seed with a give the fixed seed so that it will not change with the time. But the computer always in the MATLAB or many other computer they they take always the seed depending upon the time. So or also if you run with another computer, so you may get another solution, but the error should not be the different. But you may not expect exactly the same. But the interpolation should be fine. Yeah, but the distribution of these grid points, they are always changing. So if I have this, so next when I generate, so I will have a little bit different again. So the error is again different. So every time when you run, you get different solution, but now it is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 16. Before it was 4 times 10 to the minus 16. It is due to the distribution generation of this random number here, nothing else. Yeah, you should not be worried that why solution is different from that to that. So it is due to the generation of random number. Now let us play with different parameters. What will happen? So if I give 100 points, so with the 100 regular points, so it's very fine grid. So my error is it doesn't change much. It is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 16. Even with the 40 points, we are getting that. Yeah, it doesn't change. So let us play with different edge now. So I play with different edge. So here, for example, if I give edge is equal to 2, what will happen? So we still get, but we get very bad so because we may not have nice, no, because here, what do you get that the neighbor will be a little bit far. So let's make with a small number of grids so that we can, it can be visible. So the approximation is, looks is still nice. Yeah. So approximation is still nice. So you get nice, but what you have here? So in the middle, what you see that some grid points are a little bit far from each other. So your number of neighbor is almost maybe exactly two or three. So in that case, we are getting a little bit larger error here. Yeah. So therefore, you choose your edge always larger, for example, to be safety, you choose three. So we get a smaller error. So it is 6 times 10 to the minus 15. And now what will happen if I choose larger? So it is 6 times 10 to the power minus 16. If I choose 4, I should get maybe a little bit smaller, but due to the weight function, it doesn't matter. So I get more or less same. Yeah, I can choose even larger. So I just choose again 5 times delta x. So solution are still fine. Again, I get my resolution, the error 4.5 times 10 to the minus 16. So it doesn't matter. So you can play with different alpha also because these are the free parameter which one has to choose. So different alpha, if I choose alpha is now two, for example. So my error, is again 4.5 times 10 to the minus 16. So either you choose 2 or 6 or 5. So just in practice, so in my calculation, I have always chosen is it, it is between 2 to 6. So it has given always the expected result. Therefore, this is the free parameter up to you. I think now this is enough 
for today that uh, I have shown that all the algorithm what I have presented even with the very irregular grid we are able to construct the function accurately with the first order, second order, even with the zeroth order. So we are getting uh, the good accuracy. So thank you for today. So then we will continue in the next lecture just computing the derivative and then we start real simulation for partial differential equation. Thank you.